All right, those of you struggling to lose weight, those of you who've dieted over and over again and can't figure out how to lose weight, sometimes all you have to do is the following, bump your calories. That's right. A lot of people get leaner when they eat more. Watch the rest to learn what else you got to do. Oh, I love so when you're you, going to defy physics. I love when you do tips I hope like they this. You're going viral on TikTok. on TikTok. I know. <laughs> that stupid, that one dorky ass trainer. One, there's the always, there's there's tons of them. They're the all over. The data shows cook calories. They're all okay. over. All right, here's how it works. Here's how it works. Bumping your calories, eating adequate protein, and building muscle. You got to build muscle. Strength train. That's a recipe for fat loss for a couple reasons. One, if you gain muscle and you don't gain any body fat, your body fat percentage goes down. Two, the process of building muscle, the signal that you send, the way you feed your body in order to do that speeds up your metabolism. And so when we get people who are like cutting calories and like, oh my God, I'm at 1,200 calories, I'm at 1,300 calories and I got 20 pounds to go and I, it's just not coming off. A good coach knows what to do. We're going to reverse diet. We're going to bump your calories. Let's get stronger. And then the fat loss starts to happen. The reason why this doesn't work for so many people is they increase calories. They don't hit protein intake, intake and they have a poor exercise program or none at all. Yeah, so they just get fatter. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like, and yeah. so that's why that sounds so crazy that, wait a second, you're telling me to eat more calories and I could lose weight or lose body fat. That makes no sense to me. How's that possible? You're defying the law of thermodynamics. No, that's not what's happening right now. If I eat in a caloric surplus, feeding myself adequate protein, sending a signal to the body to build muscle, those additional calories will get partitioned over to building muscle. And more muscle in your body equates to a faster metabolism. But those things are necessary to happen. You can't just increase calories and think you're going to speed your metabolism up. You can't just lift weights and think your body's going to build muscle. You can't just add extra protein and think you're going to build. You have to do all of it. All of those things. Today's YouTube giveaway is the super bundle. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video, the first 24 hours that we post it. Uh, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. We'll let you know in the comment section if you win. We also have a sale this month. Ready for this? Maps, performance, half off. Train like an athlete, perform like an athlete, look like an athlete. We also have a bundle that includes Maps High Intensity Interval Training, Maps Performance, Maps Prime, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. That's also 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Mm -hmm. But again, it's this, like this one, this one always blows people's minds. If you're watching right now and you, and I magically could add 10 pounds of muscle to your frame. Okay. First off, most of you wouldn't look that much bigger, right? 10 pounds just spread out over your whole body. What you, what's going to happen is you're going to feel more tight. You're going to feel more sculpted. You're going to have better shape. But if you gain 10 pounds of muscle and no additional pounds of body fat, you are leaner. You have a lower Overall body fat percentage. percentage goes down. Look, 20 pounds of body fat on a 200-pound man is 10% body fat. 20 pounds of body fat on a 100-pound man is 20% body fat. That's just an extreme example, but as your lean body mass goes up and body fat stays the same, you become leaner over time. So that also happens. And then, of course, the faster metabolism. Now, this is not defying the law of thermodynamics because... The law of thermodynamics says that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So in order to lose weight, you do have to take in less cal lose body fat. You do have to take in less calories than you're burning. But that formula, the side of that formula that people tend to ignore or forget or not understand is that you burn more calories. In fact, they misunderstand and they think <clears throat> moving more is the way to do that. Let me just move as much as possible to burn more calories. The problem with that is the body adapts very quickly to calories burned from movement. Mm -hmm. But- to speed up the metabolism, build muscle. Building muscle does it. And again, there was a study that was done on diabetics that showed that strength training outperformed strength training plus cardio and cardio alone. It crushed cardio alone. It did a little bit better than cardio plus strength training in terms of fat loss. Mm -hmm. Just pure fat loss, lift weights, feed yourself adequately. And I love this because when, when we get clients that are like this and we convince them to try it, because there's a process of convincing, right? This is where the the communication skills of a good coach come into play because the average person is like, what are you talking about? Eat more? This doesn't make any sense. But once we explain this and then they follow and they trust the process, month two, month three, month four, all of a sudden they're like, I wouldn't have, I didn't believe you, but this is crazy. I'm eating more. This is where wisdom comes into play yeah. versus just knowledge, you know, and this is where I always can 
find out right away like what level that trainer or coach is like in their career because a lot of times like you do think that it's just a matter of like getting them to move more and cutting their calories um and you know like there's just so much more to that conversation you learn later on as you mature in your trinker we've all seen this play out exactly how you described dude i had i just yesterday had this conversation with my aunt she's a dietitian registered now she works with um, people in kidney disease. She's been doing it for a long time. She's very smart at what she does. And she's not overweight. She's not overweight at all. She's at a, in the range of weight that she's supposed to be. But she sends me a message. This has now been going on for the last four months, her and I have been going back and forth. And, you know, you guys know how I'm hard-headed, right? Would you guys agree? I'm hard-headed? Okay. <laughs> it's, there's a genetic component there for sure. Because yeah. my aunt, she contacts me and she's like, what the hell? She's like, my blood sugar numbers aren't looking good. I'm pre-diabetic. She just doesn't make any sense. I walk all the time. I'm doing cardio. I don't eat very much. My body weight's not high. She's like, it must be our genetics or something like that. And I said, I said, Zia, yeah. I said, please lift weights. I said, mm -hmm. you need to lift weights. And so I explained the whole thing to her. Do you think she lifted weights? No. Hmm. Then she comes back to me. Oh, I'm doing this strength-based yoga class. Zia, it's not the same thing. You need to lift weights. Trust me. And then I'm like, do you, do you know that I have a book published on this? You know, exact thing. I sent her that. Still nothing. Finally, 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 I convinced her. She hired a trainer, started doing strength training. The text I got, I should read to you guys the text because you'll laugh your ass off based off of, you know, what she said. It was so, it's <laughs> so frustrating half the time. What, who, she goes, she goes, uh, what did she say to me? She goes, you won't believe this. She goes, uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I did strength training twice a week and, uh, for the first time ever, my belly's starting to get leaner. You, for, but she starts it with, you won't believe it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll believe it. <laughs> I told you. Yeah. Do you think Just that has, what did you, what, yesterday you said, I actually did not even know. What's the name of somebody who uh, is uh, studies the kidneys? What is? Nephrologist. Uh, how, nephrologist? Nephrologist. N-E-P-A. -E is that her? Uh -huh. Is she a nephrologist? Then? No, she's a dietitian. For? That works with, specifically with uh, people who are in kidney disease. So when you have kidney disease, there's special dietary considerations. Not only and, that, because my uncle's going through this, yeah. this is why I bring it up. And the advice they're giving him is to not work out. Right. And so you think that's why that comes from from her? She no. probably hears, oh, you don't think no, that's- No, because she doesn't have kidney disease. She understands it very well. So when you first start having uh, issues with your kidneys, they'll tell you to increase your protein at first because you're not, you're not able to utilize the protein as well. Then they start to tell you to cut your protein because you're not able to filter. Yeah. Then- it's like when it gets real bad state, you know, I think it's like stage three kidney disease. Yeah. He's at stage three right now. Yeah. They get afraid. They're afraid to cause any kind of muscle damage because muscle damage elevates, uh, CK levels. So it requires the filtration. The right? fil uh, yeah. So, you know, when people get into uh rhabdo, rhabdomyolysis, yeah. they damage yeah. and they go to the hospital. Cause it's they feel like, like, crap. It's like an, an example of that, right? It's basically oh, they'll, 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 waste. that's, that's what they're monitoring. Mm -hmm. They're monitoring your kidney function and can your kidneys filter this out. And then people typically will recover. And they come out and then they're okay. So such a hard thing, right, for me to advise. Like it's like that's yeah. such a bummer because because he's diabetic. Right. He's dia he's he's diabetic and then he's also got he's he's also got stage. He can three. lift weights. He can just I know, but what sucks is that I would want to train him, yes. right? Because like yeah. you never know. You he doesn't hire some, that. some yeah. trainer doesn't know what they're doing just and too they, much and they train bad. him really yeah. hard. It's like you know, he's 70 something years old. You have to understand that he's already deconditioned. He, he needs to do like bare minimum, like stuff. practicing movements. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, and, and do like 10 minutes a day. Yeah. And with. slowly build. I've around. trained people like that yeah. and I've worked close, closely with their nephrologists and that's exactly what they would do is they would come in and we would do super mild exercises and I would slowly ramp them up over time. And then you do see an improvement. And that's the, that was the issue is the blood sugar, right? Yeah. And oftentimes diabetes and high blood pressure, right now, those are connected to, to kidney issues. So, Hey, and speaking mm -hmm. of increasing calories, I got a funny thing to tell you guys yesterday. So yesterday, uh, the peanut butter and jelly conversation went live and it's like, was a viral <laughs> yeah. sensation. It's caused all kinds of controversy in homes. I've been getting text messages. What did from somebody say that family you, that you, oh, you close the fridge? Oh, dude, no, that's the, I'll, you okay. close the refrigerator. That's what I was going to share first. I'll share that because <laughs> this person deserves, <laughs> this person does every once in a while, somebody on Instagram throws a jab at me that is like fucking really good and like gets me to like belly laugh i t i don't did you see that i put i pinned it on the thing because yeah, it was yeah. so good right 
And obviously, if those of you that don't know the, the jelly peanut butter argument, go watch my Instagram. I posted it. Basically, on there. you said put the jelly on first. Yes. You can wipe it off on the bread. Right. Very logical, right? And of course, there's all kinds of controversy on And I made the people. comment that you think like a girl. Yes. Yeah. When you make a peanut butter and jelly, do you do the peanut butter or the jelly first? Oh, I do the peanut, peanut butter yes, first. Peanut butter. What? Wait, you always do reason? jelly first because the jelly wipes off on the bread and you have no jelly on the on the knife anymore. That's 100%. Somebody writes under here, it says, dudes who apply jelly first also shut the refrigerator door with their hip while saying boop <laughs> <laughs> you did. oh my god bro i belly i was you like do. i'm stealing that i'm still gonna steal that and throw that at somebody else because <laughs> <Wow. laughs> oh gotcha dude i told but hey listen listen so okay i'm i'm, I'm again i got family friends it, it blew my mind how many people who i i did one didn't even think, i don't think they even listened to the show but that clip has gone all over the place right yeah that are like oh my god we're arguing about it at the dinner table right now Yesterday I come out and Jerry's like, what's all the fuss about? What are we talking about? Right. And I think Jerry's Jerry's working out with Kyle at the time and I'm explaining the peanut butter and jelly argument. And she's like, what? That doesn't even make sense. You can't, you can't do jelly first. Jelly doesn't spread on peanut butter. And I'm like, what? I don't understand what you're saying. I'm like, oh. I'm like, so I'm like, I'm explaining to her like, and, and it took me, it didn't dawn on me. I'm like, wait a second. So you fucking lather both side up with peanut butter and then both sides. Just, I go, yeah. Jerry, that's, that's like a, a thousand lot. calorie yeah. peanut butter. Oh. Jelly peanut butter. <laughs> Either that or it's just all on one slice. And then she puts the fresh slice on. No, she no, does. No, a, she, she goes does, both sides. She lathers both yeah. sides up. I'm like, Jerry, that's like a thousand calorie peanut Whoa, butter. Jelly double. sandwich you're making there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, I might've like, found the hack for your fitness hey, goals right hey, now. Just, hey. Hey. That's like when I scoop it in for my protein shakes. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, yeah. The half the, the everybody tub. that uses peanut butter in their meal plan, 100% doesn't measure it properly. Dude, no, a tablespoon. Not. It's all, do you nobody know, does a tablespoon. You know, uh, that was like, I was on a kick. Again, another thing that I tell you, there's there's been so many like epiphanies from competing that just even as a trainer, it just really didn't dawn on me. As my, I was so guilty of that myself. And oh, it's you know peanut peanut butter falls in the category of somehow health food. You know, yeah. people like nuts it. in general have so many calories. Yes, and it and you know, because when I competed, I now had to go away from this intuitive eating, and I had to weigh and measure and track everything. And nuts and peanut butter yeah. had to been one of the most like egregious like miscalculations. Everybody I've, thinks I've ever three tablespoons is one. Yes, Easily. dude, I had I had at least five or six male clients and this is was the, the the only hack i needed to figure out was to just take away them at work grabbing nuts yeah. eating nuts yeah 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 if you look at like a good 300 calorie 400 calorie serving of peanuts or almonds it's, it's like it's a tiny little like, sandwich like grab a little yes I think I think my serving for almonds when I was it was like twenty five almonds. Twenty five almonds is like nothing. <laughs> it's like, I'm like I don't think ever in my life until then I had I ate twenty five almonds. I always probably ate hundred and twenty five almonds when I ate almonds. So I, I think that's super. The super hack fun. for nuts is not to buy them shelled. Is you got to buy them in their oh, yeah. in the shell. So you you got to do the work to yes. crack it open. No, yeah, I, because I think that's smart. that's that's that that's that really the, slows down and, and reduces how many. The other hack, totally. I think, I agree with that. The other hack is actually the the tiny. You guys ever seen those tiny? Uh, yeah, snack bags. Yeah, they're I small. Use those. I that was a big hack for me was actually weighing <clears> that out, seeing what twenty five almonds or whatever my serving size of, of of nuts that I would allow in my diet, and then I just when I go to get it, I put it in that first. Because mm -hmm. if you just grab a jar or grab a bag and you eat yeah. nuts, it's mm -hmm. over. You're yeah. you're gonna oh, yeah. miscalculate for sure. And again, to your point, Justin, like that sometimes for people is such a small little adjustment that will make a, sh a calorie shift like yeah, three hundred calorie shift yes. at least yeah. yeah yeah. You know what screws me up are the almonds and pistachios that now are like barbecue flavor oh, or yeah. oh, I know. <laughs> hot chili flavor. I'll eat. I know. I'll eat them all. I know. Easy. Easy. I have them at home. So I have a bag salt, at home. Right a salt, and vinegar, salt and vinegar pistachio nuts that are deshelled are. I'll destroy them. Oh, oh great. my god! Yeah, I love the, the, the oh ranch. Uh, um, ses not sesame seeds, but sunflower seeds. Just oh, yeah. you yeah, know, add, as a thing to like just uh, get you through if you're doing anything outside. Uh, another I good example: it. if you eat sunflower seeds in the seeds, you're not going to eat very many. No. You stay there for 40 minutes, you're not going to eat a ton. Yeah. You get them all shelled. It's satisfying, too. It's, yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, and salted. You yeah. just pour them in your... By the way, who eats nuts without salt? Who is that psychopath? Uh, <laughs> you ever accidentally do that? Oh, you know, wow. that's only Disgusting. because... Disgusting. That's Putin. only because of the... Sodium. Ma yeah, marketing around sodium and salt that people thought that I was... I hate 
any kind of nuts with no salt. Why? Why? Why would you do that? Yeah, no, it doesn't I, make any I sense. Agree. That's, that's Throw some salt that, all over that bad that's boy. That's awful. Hey, what are we supposed to feel from drinking the Joy Mo in the middle of the day? This is something I would drink before Katrina and I go have sex at night. Yeah. You've got yeah. me drinking it in the middle of the day. Like, what's I'm happening? Concerned, what? I'm concerned of what your environment motives. are you trying to create? What are your, motive, what are your motives huh? with Justin and I? <laughs> yeah, Justin, <laughs> he's like, Sal, here, guys. Sal comes over. He's like, yeah, here. I want you guys to take Joy Mo today, midday. Like, uh, like, really? Why are we drinking this yeah, right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. Well, as, long, as long as we don't hug after this. Or well, I was going to do this weird. exercise with you. We, we embrace each other and connect. <laughs> see if you hold level. the longest. To see, see what happens, you know. <laughs> see who lets go first. I knew you it. know, just to test our... No, you know what it is? It's okay. So Joy Mode is advertised as a like pre, I don't know, sex supplement, if you will, right? The compounds in there are all in there to encourage blood flow. Um, and to some extent energy and maybe libido, but mostly it's, it's blood flow and they got good stuff in there. These are all like backed by data and science to boost nitric oxide to help with blood flow. Okay. What else do you want more blood flow for workouts? Workout. Yeah. You get a better pump. What else do you like more blood flow for? Maybe to feel better. It's vasodilating is healthy. For is there you. cognitive so, benefits to that? There are some cognitive benefits to it. Absolutely. Oh, okay. There's some ginseng in there, which is good for energy. So i I take joy mode. Sometimes during the day when I want to feel a little bit of energy, but I don't, I don't want to take any caffeine. Yeah, I'll take Joy Mode. Doug takes it for the same reason because J- Doug is caffeine free. He takes no caffeine whatsoever. He'll take Joy Mode uh, just for energy. Oh, wow. and he'll notice it. Yeah. Oh, wow. So read the ingredients yeah. off, Doug. Yeah, there's citrulline, yep. arginine nitrate, Panax ginseng, mm-hmm. vitamin C, and that's I believe it. that's it. That's it. Okay. So, so uh, arginine nitrate uh, or nitrite is that is like will boost nitric oxide more than almost <laughs> anything else. And then Panax ginseng, if you guys want to talk about the the king of all herbs, it's that one. Really, Panax ginseng. Yeah, that's the it's re, and the reason why I'm saying Panax, right? Because they're Siberian ginseng, American ginseng. They're not ginseng. They're just they call them that. The real deal ginseng is the king of Chinese medicine to boost what they would refer to as yang energy or yang energy, Mm -hmm. that strength, male energy, Mm -hmm. libido, um, to give you more um, More stamina, more, well, well, the yang yang part of chi. Right. Remember, there's balance. There's yin and yang. Don't you always find it interesting how that's something that's been around for thousands of thousands of years. I think it's one of the oldest in in, in in like Chinese medicine, and with all the stuff that we know and research, so that here we are still using that's the main that's the main ingredient in a product like this that's super beneficial. Yeah, I find that wild, dude. Do you know what the story is behind ginseng? They all have all these ancient. I'm gonna look it up on Examine. I love Examine.com because they post all the studies and stuff. So have you, do you guys know what the story is of ginseng? Because no. it's it, all these old herbs that have been used for thousands of it's years. It's a root, right? It is a root. It's been used forever. Um, the story goes, and it's supposed to, it looks like a man. So if you look at an actual ginseng root, it kind of looks like a, like a person. And the story goes that a ancient philosopher, I don't know who it might have been, someone, I don't know, ancient philosopher was stuck in the mountains with no food and, and ate ginseng and found vitality and energy and was able to survive. So it's like this, this there's like this myth around it. Oh, interesting. Which is kind of cool. Yeah. So here's what the studies uh, have been shown. Uh, it It's effective for mood, immunity, cognition, um, and then it has some erectile dysfun- uh, function, uh, testosterone, exercise performance uh, boost. I noticed mood from it. That's what I noticed. Now, if I go too hard on ginseng, it can make me feel like, like too much yang. I think I already have too much of that energy. The guy that I worked with once told me that, but, uh, but yeah, that's it right there. It's I great- mean, we're, we're, uh, we all have uh synthetic testosterone in us, so we're probably not going to feel those benefits as much, but I wonder if somebody has naturally low testosterone and is not a little bit. on synthetic testosterone, if they actually would feel even more of a boost from that naturally than they, than they would. They might. I so mean, we're the, not going to obviously. So ginsenosides, which are the active ingredients in ginseng, um, are steroid like, uh, saponins huh. that are unique to ginseng. Now steroid like, you know, I know bodybuilding back in the day, supplement companies would steroid refers to the shape, like the type of molecule cholesterol is a steroid, but they would like use that as a selling point. Natural mm-hmm. steroid. You know? That's so clever. Yeah. Of course. And I fell for that shit. When I was <laughs> yeah. 15. 
Like, hell yeah. Mm, I'll take great that marketing. All, day, all day long. You know what I can't wait for someone to fall for is someone who's going to ask Justin to change their tire. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, thanks, uh, this Justin. guy changes one tire. I got your transmission easy. in the <laughs> back. Don't worry. So how, so what's up with that? And why are the sleeves too tight on your arms? I don't know. <laughs> it, that was the one thing. I was like, it fit great, but then my arms are like, ah, We're going to have to talk to like the boys sh- over there. I almost kind of liked it. Or, I was like, oh, really? dude, I'm busting little, out. occlusion yeah. happening on <laughs> So is that a company or is that made to look like that? It's a comp. It's a company. It's it. They're um, their own fashion company. It's it's not like this is a work shirt. They're the trucky guys. It, it, yeah. So uh, do you guys? I, are- I wore some of their flannels earlier too, but uh, yeah, I like that they're bringing it back because, like I said a long time ago, like I, I started. That was this yeah. Trend. That was you know, when have, I was in high school. That was. The do style. you have? Yeah. But hold on a second. Do you have a fashion muse? You know what that is? Do you, do you is there someone you looked at and said, "I, I like that fashion. I'm gonna try and look like." Because I, I think you did. And I think I, I know who it is. I mean, who? maybe, but I it, know who you think honestly, it is. I just I look. At it, for me, it's all like I look at something. I'm like, if it looks cool, or if if, if, if that's something that like. What's so you're, you do so that you're saying you invented it? And you, didn't, <laughs> you didn't copy someone because I have an hey, idea. He looks like uh, uh, Kate Von D's. Uh, Matt, what's his name? Um, Jesse, Jesse James. James. Jesse James. That's exactly who I was gonna say. Yeah. I feel I like mean, he was inspired by him. Y- Listen, maybe a little bit, but he's Shut an actual up, man. Hey, hey, give us some pictures of Jesse James up here. I want to. See you know, it. you saw him when you were a kid. He's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, he's a cool guy. I mean, he's, that's the thing. It's he's got more tats, me, though. Yeah, no. For me, it was it was probably more. I was I was more he looking up to like too. punk rock and like rock star. You know, yeah, but they don't dress like you. Yeah, yeah, they do. Punk rockers? Are you Who? kidding me? Oh, like uh, Mike Ness and, and um, really? yeah, dude. He's also got like Linkin Park vibes. A little bit. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. That's, hey, Park. bro, Linkin Park is the shit, bro. Come uh, they're on. They're great, but like, th- that's like <laughs> pop music, dude. <laughs> Stop. They're not pop music. Linkin Park was epic, hey, yeah, dude. That's yeah, such a bummer. Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. did the Blowfish, right? Did yeah, you give me some Jesse Blowfish? James or what? What's going on over Look here? Look up yeah. Jesse James. What was this sh- show? Hey, give me the, and give me Linkin Park. Garage. Outlaw. Garage. Outlaw Outlaw. Garage. Look him up. Look at his pictures of him, like early two thousands. It's the way Justin dresses. It, it's it's like if you took a skater and a cholo <laughs> and you mix them together and put on a white dude. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, that, sure, that's Jesse James. That, that is so hundred percent. Watch, see, watch. Pictures are gonna come up. We're gonna think it's Justin. So I mean, you were thinking the same thing I was, right? Uh, yeah, bro. Exactly. I mean, he's handsome as fuck, Justin. Uh, oh, okay. Flannel. I mean, I mean it's starting to I look mean, more. You are. Yeah. Flat bill. Yeah, look at that right there. Yeah. The right, very right. That's well, Tell me that's cool Justin shit right there. He yeah. wow. He does now. Actually, I've been following him. He's um he's out there in Texas and he makes uh these really ornate, like really cool guns. Like that. Um, really? Yeah. It, they're they're super uh cool. And he makes. I mean, I'm sure they're like really expensive, but um, like oh, oh sick. Look at that. Yeah. Look at those. Yeah. Do you know what that reminds filigree me? Filigree and everything on them. Like it's it's sick. Do you know? Did you guys watch this movie in the? I want to say it was in the 90s. Actually, a pretty freaking good movie. It was with Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio. The gun reminded me of it. Did you guys ever watch uh, Romeo and Juliet? The one with Leonardo DiCaprio, oh. where it was like a weird spin on we it. You had to watch yeah. that in college. Yep. The, the, yeah. yeah, it's it was, pretty good movie. It was like yeah, a yeah. new version of it. Yeah, I barely it, remember it though. It was actually pretty good. I just I should watch that with my daughter. Yeah, I haven't seen that in a long time. Maybe anyway. you should watch it first before you do that. You're right, dude. <laughs> yeah. you say dude. I fucked up yeah. the other day. I, was, I don't remember what movie it was. We we're watching it was full on sex scene came on. I was like, what, dude? You want to talk about parent well, fucking get, up? Get, you guys want to hear something? Did you see Doug? What I sent over to the video of Russell Brunson? No, I didn't. Take a look at the video I sent over from Russell Brunson. Listen to this. What do you do? What happened? Ma- made headline news in Idaho, but they obviously must have some connections with the city and who writes in the newspaper because somehow kept his name out of it, but it's him. And he's at a wrestling meet with his his kid, a 12 or 14 year old kid and is wrestling. And he gets on the mat and pushes, pushes the kid off and punches him twice in the head. Punch what? His, his the kid fighting his son? Yes. What did the kid do? Watch the kid? video, Doug. I sent it. I sent it over to the. Is uh, that really him though? Which yeah. group did you send it to? Uh, I mean, ours probably. A, How old? Twelve to fourteen. Twelve. To, oh, wow. Which Why would you just, do that? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> wow. But oh now God. hold on. It may be one of those cases. Let me just while we're looking for this, because I just read this right here. I want to. S- did you guys see that there was a fifty-year-old man? who identified as a 15-year-old girl, oh, God. was allowed to compete with the 15-year-old girls and was allowed to shower and change with the 15-year-old girls. 
Well, so maybe it was one of those situations, a 50 year old dude trying to wrestle his kid and I'd punch him in the face too. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's okay. the, you see the whole video that's, right that's, here. That's a completely different scenario. Okay. Go, take a look. You know who actually posted it was the, that guy that I shot it out the other day, Goob that I've been following his, he, he posted it called, I'm going to play it for the guys so they can actually see it. This shit's fucking and free. They, and you're, you're, yeah. Let them hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Let them. And I you're mean, positive. It's him. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, unless I'm getting uh, punked right here, it's for sure. Oh yeah. I'll let the good. guys hear it so they can hear it. Let's see. Interrupting a Nisa wrestlers match in Idaho. Now I find this a little odd because you're just not Some. using his name in the headline. His name's Russell Brunson, and you're saying he just jumped on the mat. Is that really what he did? Let's watch the video. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Oops. That's not just jumping on the mat. That's jumping on the mat. He punches him twice. A in the head twice. Wow. Yeah. Now, I hate when rich guys. I wonder why. All towns get away with shit just because they're rich guys. Oregon Live. I think you need to update this title. Put his name in it, huh? And maybe punch his child instead of jumps on the mat. Shame on you. And Russell, for you, I've actually. Uh, found isn't that wild? Wow. Let's go ahead and take a look. What advice? You I, 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 what I found really interesting. We got to make sure it's really him. I mean, I don't know what this is. That's what this guy does is dive into right, stuff right, like right, that right, and right. research all of it before he, right, he does right. post on it. So I'm, I'm assuming, I mean, but yeah, let's see if he, if it's not, I, I bet you money it is. I also think it's really interesting that the article would present it that way. I mean, yeah. think about it. If it was anybody else, they would present, they would call out yeah. who the person is, unless you're probably really famous and you paid someone, here's the deal. Oh, right. But you would almost think it'd be the opposite. If you're really famous that they're going to want to put it out. There yeah. I mean, viral. unless he got on top of that right away, like, Oh no, that's right. Like, you're a local paper, right? Somebody's going to get a, a hold of this and then, you know, and just did some like, uh, uh, wow battled it uh you know tries to clean it up wild wow. right i there's nothing well there's, there's lots of things more annoying but it's one of the most annoying frustrating things for me is going to any kid's game and and watching parents act like complete dumb shit oh it's the worst i absolutely hate worst. it yeah where they're yelling at their kids or yelling at other kids or the, the, the oh. ref or they or they yell at each other like they're going to fight each other. Literally games were absolutely the worst for that. And like they actually had to put out policies so parents could even like they had to like sign an agreement. Like you can't you can't yell at the ref, you can't yell at the kids, you can't like it or you got to go. And then they would like enforce it because right? there's fights that would break out between all dads. the times for that. Like all the time. What I almost fought a guy who was. So I remember I tell you guys when I used to go see my my uncle Casey, who used to when oh, Brett yeah. was a kid, he was a stud. Like he was the star running back, star quarterback. Like he played every position. My uncle was the the coach, and they just destroyed. And you know my uncle's like hardcore into football, right? Mm -hmm. So he's he's. He's, no mercy rule. Yes. Yeah. And and so he was just, and I mean, he was running the ball the whole time, but his team was just was just destroying this team. It was like 60 something to like whatever, right? <laughs> and so he wasn't like throwing the ball. He just handed off and the guy, kids kept scoring and kept scoring. And the, the all the coach came unglued, came after my uncle afterwards. I was probably like 23 or 24 or sure at the time or what that. Yeah. Got up in the dude's face. Everybody broke it up. It was a big old scene. It's like, dude, Pop Warner football. These kids are like, oh, yeah. like a 12 year old. You know? you know what? These are little kids. Kids and in in sports teaches kids a lot. It's so valuable what you can learn by by or, playing organized games. Okay, to be a parent oh. and to be that shitty of an example, you're tainting what is the wrong entire with experience you? for everybody. Not there. just the experience, but what kind for of example? Kids. Well, I think exactly. a lot a lot of that has to do with you know. And I think I I thought about this a lot before Max was. You know, being a 40 year old dad, there's a lot more wisdom that, that comes with that yeah. than if I was like a 25 year old dad. And, you know, I could see being a 25 year old dad and wanting to, you know, live vicariously through that's your That's exactly that's what it is. It's, right. And it's, it's almost always these out of shape, like, couldn't yeah. do a god. You can't right, right. Do shit I didn't yourself. make it in basketball. Now yeah. my son's playing basketball. So now I'm like, I'm so invested in everything yeah, that dude. happens and it happens to him, for him, yeah. that you, you take you know it on. You know who's the worst? Hmm. The worst world of competition, quote unquote, I've ever seen in my entire life, the pageant world. Oh, yeah. Oh, You've seen documentaries on that? So, no, dude. With the little I girls. was in so it. So cringe. What? I was in it. I was in it. I didn't compete. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you were part of the beauty please. pageant? <laughs> I, I trained. I don't want to say too much because then the person, people are going to know what I'm talking about. But I trained somebody who won a relatively large local, uh, somewhat local competition in pageantry. Okay. And it's a, 
It's a weird world. It's a weird world. Yeah, I've, tra- I've trained it's, girls that are like. So I, I trained times, so. a person who was known as Miss Whatever, and I won't say what it is, but okay. she she won or whatever, and, yeah, yeah. and you know because of my training, they're like, oh, you did a good job with her. So I wasn't in the world until she hired me. I didn't even go to a competition. I just I knew she what her goals were. She wanted to get leaner. She wanted to be more fit. Yeah. And I wanted to help her do it the healthy way, and that's what we did. And then she won. And I went to the competition to watch, and she won. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. And then you're in, around that world. Like, what a weird kind of world. And all these moms are like, they're not great moms the way that they're talking to their daughters. But I didn't see a whole lot of it. You could just kind of feel it and see a little bit. Yeah. Then she's like, hey, can you train me again? Because she qualified for this bigger competition. Yeah. So I said, sure. And then she's like, hey, all these moms want you to come talk to their daughters about nutrition and exercise. And I'm like, now I knew the – the nutrition, the diet, body image issues that the, my client had suffered from because of the pageant world. So I'm going to go speak to like a group of girls and their moms. And so I'm like, well, I'm going to talk to them about it the right way. Right. So, I, and I'm not going to be like, oh, this is the fastest way to lose 15 pounds type of shit. I'm not yeah. going to do that. So I go there <clears throat> and I'm talking to these girls about the right way to do it and building muscle. And it's about your health and healthy looks good and this and that. And the girls were like kind of into it. The moms were, ha- were the issue. I had a lady come up to me and afterwards with her daughter and she let's say, she literally said this exact word she says to me. She goes, Sal, I like what you said. I like your talk, but you know, we have a date. We got to get in shape by. My daughter likes to eat fruit. Can you please tell her that you can eat too much fruit, that she's eating too much fruit right now? And I looked at her, I said, no, I'm not going to say that because that's not true. And I said, and I think that what you're saying is actually quite terrible. And in front of her, do- in front of her daughter, like, oh how? What the hell kind of mom are you? Yeah, yeah. Oh. What, age, what age group were the girls? Oh, they were in her. Uh, let's see, she was teenager or younger? Yeah. yeah, yeah. They were. It was almost eighteen, so like seventeen. Yeah, seventeen, yeah. eighteen. I think that what's even worse. Are I the, couldn't the, believe the it. Tell my daughter the, 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 the little make kid my ones skin are crazy. Being around people like that. The yeah. little kid ones of uh, uh, putting these kids in these pageants and dolling them up like crazy. I think that's even worse. Oh, like yeah. at that young age, I mean, you're just conditioning them for yeah, to be look, like your a, appearance is most important. That's yeah. what's most important. Be yeah, cute yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. No, I actually refused the trainer um, after, after that. Like, yeah, because I'm like, I'm not going to come talk to these people. I'm not going to show up to these events. They're terrible. Backstage, the moms. Oh God, it was. It's always interesting when you get introduced yeah. to like a new, like a new world, right? Like mm-hmm. that. Like it's like this has been right here under my nose this entire time. I had no idea. That's how I felt about bodybuilding when I got into that. That's been like in our space for so totally. long, and I'm. I thought I was so close to it, yet I was so far because when yeah. I got in there, I realized like, oh my God, this is so different than I ever thought it was going to be. I really thought I was going to meet the brightest minds in the fitness space. I thought, oh, these are going to be all Mm -hmm. the people that like really get and understand the science of nutrition and exercise. And like, this is the, this is the pinnacle of that. And it was like the opposite. Speaking of which, did you guys know? So, you know, now we're working with NASM, right? So they're a company that uh, sponsor us now. They're the the most well-known accepted uh, national certification for trainers. Did you guys, I went on their website. I'm going to pull it up right now. The stuff that they offer the things that they offer is absolutely, uh, absolutely insane. First off, speaking of bodybuilding, they have a physique and bodybuilding course. What? They have a physique and bodybuilding course no that you could take. I didn't know that. Now it gets you um, continued education units. Yeah. So it's not a certification. Right, right. You got to get certified first. But literally teaches you about the wow. proper way to, to prep the proper way to come out of prep, like the whole- You got to make a note, Doug, yeah. for Katrina to message them. I would love access to that so I could dive through it. I would love to see- Just to kind of break it down, all their, like what they do. Yeah, right? yeah. I just, I would love to hear their philosophy. That's such a um, a fine line to, to skate, right? If you're this, this academic course and that's a sport and it's a sport that can send a lot of people mm-hmm. in the wrong direction nutritionally and stuff like that. I can't wait to read- how they because they're going to communicate the right way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I can't wait to read how they 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 speak to that. They also have a certified wellness coach certification oh, wow. for wellness. Don't they have? Did they get into the golf space? I thought I saw. I that. would not be surprised. Yeah. I, I, there's so much stuff that they have in there. That's. I mean, that was a part. Remember when we were having dinner and. Oh. You know, as 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 well. Ver- I mean, we all have multiple certifications from them. Obviously, we're, we're very familiar with NSM. But what a disconnect there was to like all the things that they. How nobody we- knows. Yeah, all their offerings. Yeah. Do you know how many uh, coaches and trainers they've certified over the years? Take a wild guess. 
Ooh, I'm going to take They've been it. around for a little while, right? right? How many years they've been around? Do we oh, know? God. Like total from when they I'm started? Gonna, I'm going to say 80,000. From when they started? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 1.5 million. Holy, Ooh. really? Yeah. 1.5 million okay. yeah. trainers? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They've been doing it for a long time. I mean, it was the gold standard for a lot of those like corporate gyms, so- that doesn't really surprise yeah. me. And they also do payment plans, which I didn't know either. I used to, th I, I remember when I got my cert, oh, yeah, back then it was like a thousand bucks. Now they're like a little more. No, it was even cheaper than that. When we got it, it was $500. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah, I got, you know why mine was a thousand? I yeah. did too. I did uh, CPT yeah, and CPT. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, bucks. Now, but now they have payment plans. So you could pay like 50 bucks a month, 60 bucks a month, whatever. Smart. Yeah. Smart, yeah, smart. Good stuff. So, it, it, hey, um, if you're a trainer or coach and you want education, I, you know, Check them out because they have so many things to offer, not just your traditional. I mean, that's one of the things I'm most excited about partnering with them is actually to go start diving through all their content that they offer outside of what we already knew they had. Mm -hmm. So, and I was impressed with the dinner that we had and hearing like everything they were already doing. They just, they need a better voice. They need yep. someone to communicate all these things they're doing because they are the leader in the space. They've been the leader in the space for a really long time. And we should have known better mm -hmm. that of course they were going to evolve and continue to do more things and do better stuff, That's but right. they haven't had the right voice. Have you guys seen the commercials? They're running TV commercials all the time yeah. now. Oh yeah. Yeah. I see them on, I see them on TV all the time now, which I never used to see that. Mm -hmm. So they're definitely making a push. Yeah. Hey, did you, you guys want to hear a crazy stat that I just uh, saw on Twitter and I come or X and I confirmed it. Hmm. Obesity rates, right? We all know that that's just exploding or whatever. In one generation, so somebody made this a chart. In one generation, okay, obesity rates tripled. Wow. Tripled. In one generation. It, from 1987 to 2021, the obesity rate in this country tripled. Yikes. Three times as many people are now obese than were in 1987. Hmm. Abs this is... This you, is an epidemic. Do you that think at one point we Sal, need to we need to face, man? Do you think at That's one insane. point, and if and maybe we're there already, that it becomes so much of the majority that everything we everything we talk about or we present or we try and push is just going to get kind of smushed yeah. out because if you got eighty percent of the population at one point, which it's, we're heading in that direction, right? That there's a possibility in our lifetime we're we, close to the, yeah, to the majority in, in our lifetime we might see like a 70 80 percent of people obese like you talking about being in shape and healthy will be such an anomaly especially if we start finding out ways with science to hack into yeah. you know prolonging things or curing things or like right. and, and make it to where people can do less still you can travel like with ease and and you know walking around you you won't even need to walk anymore like you got all these like different devices and things to have you kind of um you know traveling well when, did I, you, did when you, I first watched Wally it was I actually yeah. got a little depressed because I worked in fitness when yeah. I remember seeing that I was like, it kind of made me sad a little bit even though a lot of people thought it was funny oh so did you see uh Weight Watchers I didn't know Weight Watchers Watchers uh, have they partnered with uh, one of the GLP one? Uh, oh, did they? Yeah, so that's part of their program. <gasps> you oh, get wow. it. You get it with their. Look up Weight Watchers. Can and I GLP say something one. about Weight Watchers? That I don't know. A lot of people may not. I don't. Know, I don't know if you guys will agree with this, but of all of the mainstream weight loss whatevers, Weight Watchers, in my experience working with clients, was one of the. It's not great, but it was one of the better ones. They did communicate behaviors better and they didn't do the whole, they used point system, which actually worked better for people than calories and that kind of stuff. So when I had clients that did Weight Watchers and I'd follow them along in comparison to all the other stuff that was out there, it was actually one of the better ones. I'm not a fan of it, but mm -hmm. I, there's obviously a brilliance to it because it wouldn't have lasted this long and done so right. well, right? And I agree with that. The reason why that is, is the thing, the points yeah. that you're making. The other really one that you didn't systems. mention, the other thing that they did really well as you didn't mention was community. Yeah. They did a really good that, yes, job yes. of the the community aspect of meets and stuff yes. like that. I mean, I knew people that had gone through it a long time ago and they remained showing up to the meets, yep. you know, and like they would show up to yep. their, the meetings just so they could do the weigh-ins and, and have that accountability piece. And so they did a lot of things, right. They obviously. seem to move more in the, in the better direction, I would say. Cause that, I mean, I don't know how popular Jenny Craig is now or any of that stuff, but back then when I was training people, it was like, Oh. The diet plans were like, buy our frozen food. This is how yeah, you yeah, slim fast. You yeah. know, you're just basically replacing everything with shakes. Yeah. So what does that say there, Doug? 
Yeah, so they have this thing called the GLP-1 program experience. And it looks like they have, um, obviously, the GLP-1, they have a list of foods, they've got activity goals, and this is for people who are on the GLP-1. Are they publicly so traded? I don't, think, are they they publicly sell the, I don't think they're selling it. So they call it their... If you're on a GLP one, oh, this is and if you're, you're, no, they're part. Look up. I saw. I read an article on them being partnered with them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Take a look at. It. I, I very. Don't you? Do you really think that they promote something like that and they don't have a stake in the game? Well, well also, either, either way, this will be smart. Yeah, what the popularity of them? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then also, is, is that a publicly traded company? I don't know. I'm we'll about to look that up. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, okay, what are your dietary considerations with the GLP-1? Make sure you hit your protein targets and lift weights. That's okay, it. so you can get everything you want from your Weight Watchers clinic. That includes GLP-1s See? or other medications. See? Wow. So now, now, are they selling... Yeah. Oh, uh, the, are they selling it as the peptide from the from the pep the compounding pharmacy? Or are they selling the? Brittle? I see the names Wagovi and uh, what's the other one? Um, I forget. Uh, Ozempic. Ozempic. So they're probably working with the pharma companies. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Most likely. That's why I'm wow. curious about yeah, if they're publicly traded. You know what's interesting? They are, public public they are publicly traded? Yeah, here's the What's stock. the stock at right now? Tell me where it's at. $4. Oh, that's an easy buy. Yeah, and tell me where it's been. Oh, yeah, this good time. Look at that. last five years. Let's get it. Let's grab that. We should buy it. What so, was yeah. the high there at back in? What is that? It was at $40 in mid-2021, $40. Bro, let's grab that. Right now that might be a good 40. idea. You want to grab some of that, Doug? Sure, let's you, do it. Yeah, 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 you know what's interesting about <laughs> hey, we might be accused of pumping the stock up. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah, we, we have so much do, influence. Yeah. We're allowed to do that. We're allowed to talk about something we're buying like that, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Unless we, uh, well, what's the, what are the well, we better buy it now before this airs. We're right? not telling anybody else to do that. We're just sharing that we did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. No, I'm on it. I'm what, do, personally, I'll do it. Yeah, these GLP ones are interesting because for the first time ever, you actually have uh, pharma companies. Uh, seem to be battling snack food companies and food mm -hmm. companies, and the propaganda wars are kind of heating up and stuff, which is interesting. Like, who's gonna who's gonna win? Evil pharma or evil big food? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what's <laughs> what's the game? I here? mean, partnering with someone like Weight Watchers is a boy is that a move? I think that's going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm, especially since Weight Watchers is all about restricting calories right in a point system and one of the the greatest advantages the glp ones is that it you don't have yeah. the cravings you yeah, don't want as much so the six they, and they weight watchers is obviously if they wouldn't have been around this long if they well, haven't proven to have success for their their clients they're going to have even more success well, the glp people. ones what are, what's weird about them i was just talking to a family member because the other stuff i have them. a family member that's gonna it's gonna go on them okay and they, they're going through our partners at mphormones.com I don't want to say who they are because I don't know if they want it public, but it's a family member. And she asked me about all of them and whatever, and, and what do you think? And what's what's interesting about the GLP ones is they do reduce, they do, they do make you eat less, but they don't seem to curb appetite at all like any other intervention we've ever done. Like they're typically stimulants, is what they do. Like Adderall will do that, right? You give someone Adderall, they want to eat less, or you give them a stimulant, they want to eat less. Ephedra did that, right? Makes you want to eat less. They don't operate that way. They seem to operate on the part of the brain yeah. that seeks comfort and it affects your behaviors around that. So this is why people are drinking less alcohol, smoking less cigarettes. Yeah. They're not biting their nails. They're like yeah. all the all their That's little what's habits. Most interesting about it. All their little habits are going down, which include, and we know this, people overeat because it's a it's it's they're abusing food like people the way that people abuse drugs it's really it's really plain and simple I, you know we, right before we were started recording i was sharing with you guys about um our realtor down in texas who just yeah. moved down to cabo he, one of the things we were getting caught up we haven't talked to each other in like over a year and uh you know part of the motivation of cabo is like you did this huge lifestyle change and they both went on o o ozempic for and lost 70 pounds yeah yeah, but each of them, both him and his wife, and like completely have changed life, you know. And he, so he's like raving about how uh, amazing it was for him. And I know there's like this, the, there's a lot of controversy in our space around it. And I think I, I always want us to be very careful on how we talk about it, right? Totally. Because because there's there are some benefits to it, and I'm not I'm not completely anti it at all because there's it's showing to have some huge benefits for a lot of people, and if it's something that helps you move in the right direction, the counter and what the people in the fitness space that really don't like it that have been hammering it so hard is that if you don't pair it with hitting your protein intake and lifting weights, you will lose as much muscle as you lose fat. By the way, I want to be real clear. Yeah, it's not the it's not the GLP one that's right that makes you lose muscle. It's 
exactly what would happen to you if you cut your calories on your own that's and didn't I'm lift weights. So, and I'm so glad protein. you said that because that's just what your body does. That happens to the same person who doesn't take a GLP-1 and just decides they're going to go on this hardcore restricted diet. They start intermittent fasting or they start yeah. the paleo diet. They start some diet that they're going to do where they're restricting calories and almost always they restrict calories and they don't get enough protein intake and then they do mm -hmm. cardio. And they yeah, and then that, of course, that here's why that in Here's why that happens. People need to understand what happens. When you cut your calories down suddenly and your body's getting no signal that it needs to keep muscle, what it does is it pairs muscle down so that your metabolism can slow down and meet the new caloric intake. Because as it reduces muscle, because you're taking less calories than you're burning, so you're losing weight, losing weight, losing weight, your body says, we need to balance this out. We don't want to lose weight forever. We'll die. So it slows your metabolism down by making you lose muscle. This would happen on a diet with or without a GLP-1 agonist. That's right. Now, that, in other words, just like we always say on the show, if you're going to cut your calories, hit your protein intake, lift weights, you got to give your body a signal that says we need muscle and you got to feed it adequate protein to do so. And that'll minimize or even stop the muscle loss. And then you'll just get the fat loss. It's not the GLP one that's doing it, but the, the propaganda goes out to whatever. Now here's, here's where I stand with GLP one. They are effective of all the interventions I've seen. They're head and shoulders better they're less dangerous by far. The other, the other shit we, that, that they used to sell for fat loss and weight loss were oh, terrible. Yeah. Cause heart problems, all stuff. GLP ones don't seem to do that at all, but it is not the cure all end all. If you go on one of these, the ideal way to do it is to use it as a bridge to learn new behaviors and to rewire your brain and to figure out new habits and, and, and create new disciplines because uh, otherwise you're reliant on this GLP-1 mm -hmm. right. agonist and you'll have to be on it for long, 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 long or forever periods of time. But the, the conversation I'm having with my client, if they if they are wanting to use this or they do the use, and, and, and I've had clients that were past clients of mine that have now used it and then we've actually talked and they've asked my opinion on it and I showed them, I said, listen, if if you came to me and in a month you lose six pounds and so you think you're excited, but then when I go and I look at your diet, and I see you're missing protein intake by 50% every single day, I'm going to want you to stop because I know that that weight loss that you had, as much yeah. of it is, is muscle as it is fat. Even though you're doing all these other things that are great, you're going to end up losing muscle also because you're eating so low calorie and you're not even... Now the other the opposite is true. If my client says, "Man, I'm doing great and I'm I'm hitting my protein every single day and I've seen I've lost six pounds and weight train," I'm like, "Then then awesome. Then it's so, going to help do what you exactly have, what you're saying." So this family member that I have that's going to be doing this, and and she, again she asked me what should I do, and I said, "Go to mphormones.com, talk to them. We trust them." And then here's what I advise. And the reason why I advised her and said to her, "I think a GLP one might be something you want you can try," because she said, "I want to try this. What do you think?" She's been lifting weights now consistently for a year. So it's been about a year that she's been lifting weights. She's been eating adequate protein. She's having challenges with food because she's created some bad behaviors around the food. And so I told her specifically, all right, when you go on this, it's going to help rewire some of these behaviors and actions that you have around food, but they will wire themselves back if you don't work on the discipline and the structure mm -hmm. and the behaviors around it. So that's what she's going to do. She's going to go on and, and do the whole thing, which by, you know, by the way, if you go through the pharma companies, it's, it's like the brand name, brand name Ozempic, it's semaglutide. Semaglutide is the, so it's like buying, you know, the brand name rollerblade versus traditional rollerblades or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like, or Benadryl yeah. versus the Safeway. Yeah. It's the one. same, yeah, yeah. it's the same medication. Yeah, it's the same, ibuprofen. it's a peptide. It's yeah. the same thing. So if you go through our people or, or, or other people like that, you're still getting pharmaceutical grade. It's still going through a you know a, a compounding pharmacy. It's still under regulation. It's just way less expensive because it's not you know the the pharma company or whatever. What's the typical cycle with that? Like, what do they when they get somebody to first you know? Um, Good question. Hop on that. Yeah, I'm just. I think curious. it's like three or six months. The average person loses fifteen percent of their body weight. Look that up and confirm that. That's a significant. That's significant. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking because you know there are some uh, situations like my dad, for instance, too, who's like limited uh, mobility wise, knee had like double knee replacements, and you know I'm already working with him with peptides for mm. uh, BPC, and so we're oh, cool. starting to get yeah, and he's starting to get some progress in terms of mobility and movement and being able to you know exercise more consistently. 
but he packed on a lot of weight, mm. you know? And so I was like, you know, looking into it a bit, but again, like, you know, healthy, I've, I've tried ad nauseum to uh, get him to, uh, yeah. you know, listen as far as like the, the right I, types of uh, disciplines to apply. My, so I, I'll tell a bad story. I have a friend who did, who did semaglutide and hated it. Made him feel nauseous. Yeah. Don't like the way he felt. So yeah. he went completely off. Yeah. So yeah. again, that goes back to our advice we always do though, it's, too. It's like if your body's telling you it doesn't like yeah, it, stop dude. doing it. You know? But I think here's what I think. I think that uh, this preliminary data on helping people break habits, that's fucking wild. Yeah. Could you imagine Honestly, that's what, an what made me curious for- at all? Because it's like, you know, if it can impact uh, the way that you think and like, um, you know, it changes like a little bit of that smoking behavior. and alcohol and shit like that. That's huge. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. You know, yeah. if that just happens. for that alone. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I got to tell you, speaking of uh, family and stuff, my little baby go- girl, she's just, she's just my little angel. And that I wanted. So my 14 year old. Uh, love her to death, you know, great relationship, the whole deal. But I never got the, and she knows this because she's a she's a little shit. She's never, <laughs> she was never like the daddy's girl. She is when she wants something, but she was never like the, you hear the stories, you see people, daddy's girl, they jump to daddy. I want to be with daddy all the time. I think my little baby's like that. I'm so pumped. I was eating lunch the other day and she didn't want to go no one. She just wanted to sit on my lap and hug me the whole time. And I'm like, uh, I'm just like, number one, love it. Number two, oh fuck. <laughs> yeah, wrapped around your shoulder. Oh, sure. so screwed, dude. Yeah. Gotcha. But she was just hugging me like the whole time. And then she kept looking up at me and smiling and then hugging me the whole time. And I was just like, man, if you could talk, you could literally tell me to do whatever you want. Uh, you got to do. That's yeah. the part I hope never ends. You know what I'm saying? I hope oh, I, hope I can best. manage that all the way through his life that he'll still be that person. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I saw I, that. Um, go ahead, Doug. Oh, oh right. I was just going to say I have an update on the Russell Brunson thing. Oh. So he is a parent coach at this school. And it was his son that was wrestling. And yeah. apparently this kid got him around the neck in a hold that was illegal, at least according to Russell. And so that's why he jumped in. Oh, so yeah. He well, lost his You cool. watched the video though, right? You see him, he punches the kid twice. Yeah, well, That's not cool. So according to this, he was getting a little bit like stressed out, you know, because the, he was yelling <laughs> to the referee, you know, he's got an illegal hold. He's choking my son. Yeah, yeah. And he took matters into his own hands. Yeah. Right. I Look, I get that as a protective apparently. dad, but- you know, punch a little kid. Yeah, that's that's a bit excessive. Yeah, yeah I mean, I feel like I've fourteen year old kids that are wrestling like that does that. I feel like I could get in there and like pull the kid off. Yeah, yeah right. And, and punch yeah. the ref. You want to hit anybody? Yeah, hit the yeah, yeah, yeah. Just break them up. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I could, I, and I would pull from my son, right, and like separate like that. Yeah. The, he went in. You see him. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah. You. I mean, you couldn't tell on TV, but if you guys watch the video I sent in the in the group thread, you uh, you see. You have to look at that. Yeah, he cocks more. back and and throws two wow. punches to the kid's yeah, head. Not, so it's not like. Uh, yeah, that's not a good idea. It's yeah, yeah. That's a. That's a, that's a little excessive to no. have to do that. He could have really hurt him. Yeah. Oh, no. Of course. That, that big age. man hitting a kid. No, no. Dude, I got to tell you about something I've been trying. I've been trying something called, uh, that I want to tell you guys about, uh, vagus nerve stimulation. So you guys know, we talked with Dr. Khan about the vagus nerve and what it's responsible for mm-hmm. and how it communicates with the gut That's and the not brain. the one that you go through the prostate to get to? Or? No, okay. Justin. I'm not going to do what you told yeah. me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's like, hey, I do this thing. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> for fun really on the weekends. Yeah, yeah dude, can I do it for you? Yeah. No, uh, vagus nerve, uh, it can, it, uh, it's a fight or flight control or fight, flight or freeze control or whatever. And you can look up um, studies on vagus nerve stimulation for things like depression, inflammation, gut issues, all these different things. So we talked to Dr. Khan. He talked about this procedure he does where he injects the vagus nerve with certain peptides or whatever. So that led me down a rabbit hole. And I looked up vagus nerve, uh, non-invasive vagus nerve stimulation. And there's evidence that shows that it actually works. So I bought myself a device. And I've been using it the past couple of days. What does it look like? Yeah, yeah. What, so it goes like around your neck. Mm. No affiliation, so I'm not going to say the name right. But anyway, it yeah. goes around your neck, sits where both sides of it sit where the vagus nerve is. And then you you hit these programs, and then it says and sends electrical impulses. Uh, so you feel the muscles flex too, uh-huh. but it stimulates the, the vagus nerve. Now, I've only done it twice, huh. but each time, or three times, I should say, each time I do it, I do notice afterwards I get really calm, like this really weird... Calmness like a release. Life. Yeah, dude. So I'm going to keep using it and uh, I'll let you guys know. Yeah. yeah, that's what he was talking about. It's like, it sounds real interesting, especially for uh, like competitive athletes yeah. and just people that have like something where, you know, it's like a lot of anxiety going into this event or, or anything like that yeah. to be able to 
um, you know, do something oh like God. that to relieve you of all that. Yeah, it, it was a weird feeling, up. but I'm going to use it consistently because it takes about a week or two. Super interesting. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to hear. Was it yeah. expensive? The one I got was like 200 something bucks. Not too, so too somewhat, crazy. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, it's not, not a cheap. Not thing. crazy. Right? Yeah. Sometimes those things can be ridiculous. Yeah, each, no, so no. I don't know how crazy yeah. you want. No. Hey, I saw that uh, on the the shout out today that uh, Andrew had. Yeah, Andrew he, had a suggestion. Yeah, what did you got for us? What, what's, what's, what's the shout out? Yeah. You wanted us to shout some someone out. Yeah. All right. So today's shout out comes from me. <clears throat> from who? Comes from me. Oh, okay. okay. From me for <laughs> you personally. Yeah. This isn't really a shout out, <laughs> but I know you guys, the hosts of the show, are generous people. So I wanted to see if I could use <laughs> the next minute of time. Really, you're you're leverage getting something out of us whoa, on, whoa, on live whoa, on air, whoa. you fucker. I want to shout out my yeah. homies. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you did <laughs> a good job, though. Yeah, yeah. You guys yeah. are such nice, generous yeah, yeah, people. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's, let's hear it. <laughs> so, yeah, we want to see if I can use you know the next minute of time to see if I can do some local recruiting for my adult baseball team. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> what, bro? You're a dope so self-serving. You fuck. Uh, hold on a second. Hey, 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 hey I thought he was gonna say his kids. Team. So did I. I, yeah, like, I thought you were gonna try to get us to donate cool. to his kids' baseball team. Wait a second. You want to use the platform right now to you recruit some, some of the ringers, best baseball huh? players in the Bay Area? Yeah. Is that what you're trying to do? Yeah. Uh, simply put, yes. But <laughs> let me <laughs> let me give you some brief context. Right? Okay, let's okay, hear so it. So in the summertime, you guys know for the last couple of summers, I've been playing Sunday league baseball. You know, yeah. my expectations going into the league, it was just the fun older men. Tr- throwing slow, hitting bombs, just throwing beers back in the dugout, just yeah. there to have fun. It's a lot more competitive, a lot more fun than I thought it was to be. It's a lot of guys in their mid-20s to, you know, early 40s. And uh, it, I've been enjoying it a lot. Basically, you know, my team, the team I've been on, we've been in first place the last couple of seasons. And uh, But when it comes to playoffs, we keep losing in the semifinals. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, okay, so that's what we're, we are looking for, somebody who lives in the Bay Area. Hold on, what's the name of your team? That is yeah. a ringer. Yeah. yeah, so my team's name is Mission City Monarchs. Uh, that's what do they just, email you or something? Yeah, so if you're interested, you know, if you're someone that you play baseball, you you put the gear in the garage. Don't waste our time. You got to be good. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. What positions would be ideal? We're like looking for five to five tool players. Spots. Yeah. Now I don't know what the response is going to be like. Maybe one person is going to shout, going to reach out to me, or it could be ten plus people. But regardless, email me, Andrew. Minimum high com. school experience, yeah. right? Yeah. If you well, play don't baseball, be, don't hit me up if you only played baseball you and, 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 and t ball. Yeah. That was your their last time playing baseball was t ball. You better have some <laughs> at least high school experience. <laughs> right, who do they email you? E- Andrew at Andrew at mindpointmedia.com. Okay. All right. Hey, you guys. We got to go to one of their games and heckle or something. Is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I want the. Hey, that's all right. I want the name of the team. If we actually yeah. recruit like three or four ringers for this team, that's the least you can do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we get some some publicity yeah. if you win the championship. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll put the logo on our dugout. Yeah, we'll all right, all right. Sponsor logo all on right, the back. Here. All Jersey. joking aside, we got to come watch you play, dude. Yeah, I know yeah, you're yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah, I know you're was, really good. That was a unique shout out. I like that. Good stuff. All right. Look, there's a company called Sleep Breakthrough that makes a product that improves the quality of your sleep and helps you fall asleep faster. Proven with ingredients that are backed by data. It's good stuff. It really works. It will improve your sleep, so you have faster recovery, better muscle growth, better fat loss, less cravings, better mood. Go check them out. You can go to sleepbreakthrough.com forward slash mind pump. Use the promo code mindpump10 for a discount. All right, back to the show. First question is from Iwalina Licka. I'm on a reverse diet. I don't want to weigh myself because it messes with my mind. How do I know my metabolism is improving? Oh, that's a great question without weighing yourself. Positive signs include an improvement in energy, more strength in the gym. The, your body feels tighter and more sculpted. Um, weighing yourself is oftentimes part of the formula because you're trying to see if you're gaining too much weight, you know, and you can slow down the the reverse. Body fat testing can do this as well. Otherwise, it's going to be based off of feel, in my opinion. In, in a improving, quote-unquote, metabolism feels typically like more energy, more strength. Yeah, more energy, b- uh, bigger appetite, more strength in the gym. Mm. And feeling like you look like you're not really gaining or losing any weight. Like, that's a good sign, right? Even yeah. though you're not using the scale, you look at yourself in the mirror and I'm like, man, I I've, I know I'm eating more yep. food. I am I want even more food on top of that. I'm getting stronger in the gym. I feel good. These are all things that were... And it doesn't mean that necessarily all of them have to be happening for you to necessarily be doing it right. But those are the key indicators that I'm asking a client who we're trying not to weigh, we're reverse dieting, and we're training is I'm, I'm looking for... 
us hitting new new PRs and lifts. I'm looking for, man, I feel so good. Yeah. I'm looking for, Adam, I actually want to eat more even. Like those are all signs that our metabolism is, is boosting. Yeah, getting, um, it's so key with the reverse diet to see that your strength seems to be improving. Like if you're reverse dieting and you're not really getting stronger in the gym or worse, getting weaker, um, check out your workout. Uh, your workout programming is off. What you don't want to do is a reverse diet and not get stronger. That that may mean you're you're just going to be putting on body fat, or you're just overtraining or training yeah. in a, in a, in, a, in the wrong way. Is it safe to say she's uh, team peanut butter? <laughs> <laughs> Next question is from JM Bird seventy six. I was listening to some old episodes, and the protein recommended was 0.5 to 0.7 grams per pound. When and why did that change to no. one ground no, gram it per didn't. pound? It was no, zero. it didn't. We've been saying this since day one that there's a difference between the recommended, recommended. RDA and then there's a difference between what we say. Well, no, they're referring. They're not they're, referring to the. I know RDA. what they're saying. We're no, referring? RDA is uh, well, they're per, referring per to kilo. Yeah, they're, what they're referring to is the studies on protein intake, and here's what yeah. the studies show. Well, no, they're referring to what we have said on the show, and the only time we've ever talked about 0. 0.5 to 0. 0.7 is that's what the minimum people should to take, and we've never yeah, strayed from minimum. that. But it's always easier to tell a client one to one. I think. I th okay, so okay, so I I know I've specifically brought up studies, and the studies show that the upper limit for benefit that you're going to get from protein is like 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 grams per pound of body weight. That's what they're referring to. RDA is per kilogram. It's even half, it's half of this essentially. Yeah. Now the reason why we don't say, and I'll refer to studies sometimes and say that, but why do I say a gram? <laughs> why do we all say a gram? Everybody misses. So then yeah. they miss and they yeah. end up in the, in the, in and the, not in only the that, that even if you go over, you're it's fine. you're fine. Yeah. And there's actually studies to support with trained athletes and people that are training really hard might be better. that 1.5 yeah. is good. It's just easy so to say one, one is a good, good yes. base. Yeah, it's and it's easy math too. Yeah. For people. It is. You, you tell someone eat 0 0.6 grams per pound of target body weight. Yeah. Like, huh? Never yeah. say that to a client. One gram per pound of body weight, what your target body weight is. It's super easy for people. And almost everybody misses it by a little bit on a regular basis, mm -hmm. which puts them still in that 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 zone of what would be considered upper limit. Now you're right, Adam. Eating more than that, obviously, if you're cal for calorie controlled diet, right? So we're not talking about like your calories going too high, but eating more than that may have additional benefits for people who train hard and uh, satiety, right? So if you have a really hard time with your appetite. Um, you could trade out some of your carbs for protein or even some of your fats for protein so long as you don't eat under what's called essential and you'll find more satiety effects from protein than you will the other two macronutrients. Next question is from Garth Cahill. I'm hearing people say they eat a lot of grams of protein and when I ask about portions, it seems really low. Do you think a lot of people don't realize that 100 grams of chicken breast isn't 100 grams of protein? <laughs> I've come to realize a lot of people have a misconception. Margaret, who does some of our info at mindpumpmedia.com or no, sorry, our chat on our website, the Mind Pump Media site where people can ask yeah. questions. This she's is a problem. She's on there and she brought this up yesterday. So yesterday I did our, our, our my meeting that I do with the team um, on that side. And she said, yeah, several people were telling me that they were eating 200 grams of protein a day or whatever. And she's like, she, and then she figured out they think a gram of meat equals a gram of protein. Well, no, or they think that it's a protein food. And then however many grams that protein food that's all counts how many of grams of protein. Uh -huh. No. So that's where this comes from is like, somebody's like, yeah. Oh, it, it's uh, you know, chicken is obviously a protein food. It would fall in that category. Oh, mm -hmm. I, they weigh it out. Oh, this protein food weighs 100 grams. So therefore, I'm eating 100 grams of protein. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, 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 no. The, A chicken breast, a six ounce chicken breast is only got about 32 to 38 grams of protein in it. That's all you're getting in it. And that's a big six to eight ounce chicken breast. Yeah. So there's Let's not- Let's do the math for this, what she is, what she's asking. Are there 100 asking grams? Her. Yeah. What's, what's oh, 100 grams? Way, way less than that. I'll, I'll figure it out right now. Um, 31 grams. So 31 grams of protein are in a hundred grams of chicken breast. It is not all pure protein. Yeah. Um, does, you know, not even protein powder works that way when it's supposed to be, you know, as close to being pure protein as possible. So when you're trying to calculate your protein, use a food calculator or, you know, like an app 
because 100 grams of meat is not 100 grams of protein. And, and yeah. people, so like I said, she was working with someone and this woman was like, just not getting the results, not figuring it out. And then, and so she had to kind of boil because she was giving her macros and then she had to boil it down. And she's like, oh, yeah, Dude, no, no, Thankfully no. that information is so easy to, it's so easily accessible now. Yeah. Like, you know, it used to be like the calorie king. You'd have that little book and you'd have to kind of refer to, you know, what that equated to, but it's just like, yeah, there, there's so many apps now that I, you can go there, through. I had a client once that thought that heavier foods <laughs> made you gain more weight. Oh yeah. So he made the argument like, no, no, cotton candy is so light. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. Dude. I He's swear not, to God. I love that. I wow. I love that. And I can oh, see the logic, wow. right? He's like, how can this yeah. make me gain more weight yeah, yeah. than this heavy piece yeah, yeah. of meat right here? Yeah, yeah. You know? That's pretty like, funny. Oh, I mean, it's basically air, you guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't really uh, it okay. doesn't make you gain That's anyway. hilarious. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I the reason why we hammer this home on the podcast so much is because of all the years of all the people that we've dealt with. Yeah. It's just almost everybody. It's I, yeah. I, I never Everybody's once off. Never once have I. I, mean, I take that back. That's not true. There's been times where somebody is is mm -hmm. suffering from digestive issues and they're complaining about something, and then I assess and I go, oh wow, they're eating a lot of protein. I'm going to have this person scale back. So that is a rare, rare case, but almost always. People are, and, and people who think they're hitting enough protein are not hitting enough protein. Like not just people who are like, I'm not sure, or no, I'm yeah. probably not. People who go like, oh yeah, I eat enough protein. Those people are always wrong. Yeah. They always think that it, because in their head, they go, oh, I'm a big meat eater. I eat meat and eggs for breakfast. I have a lunch. I eat meat and I eat dinner again. I eat meat and I eat big servings of the meat. Yeah. That's still not enough for people. No. Anyone who weighs 175, 180 pounds. No, they're eating like more, 75 yeah. grams of protein. Yeah, they're right eating like 75 grams of protein right there what i just and that's good serv servings of meat on meal two meal three and yeah. four eggs five eggs six eggs for breakfast yeah, yeah. you're still under eating well they're yep. full so you know it just equates to that in their mind that it's probably adequate yeah mm -hmm. yeah so that this is why you hear us hammer this so much is because it's just and man what a quick easy way to show somebody like Immediate, someone who's already been training and they think they've been dieting. One thing, right. uh, yes, immediate you know, results. Immediate it's, results. Like the needle. You've been, you've been, you've been hammering away. I was, you know, this is just my my uh, my my mom's uh, husband. We were discussing this, and he's like, he was telling me how consistent he's been. He's like, man, I'm just Adam. I'm not, I'm not getting any stronger in the gym. I'm not building any muscle. And then I, and he's a big dude, right? So he's like two fifty is what he was. He's a big, tall guy. And I started asking him about his protein intake, and he's like. He's probably eating like 50 grams of protein at best a day. And I'm like, how long have you been? He's training five days a week for the last year. Yeah. And it's just not moving anywhere. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, literally. This is the guy just, that adds, he'll add a scoop or two of protein and be like, Whoa. And this is exactly what I said. I said, listen, you're way far from where I want you to be. But all I want you to do right now is literally just add a scoop of protein every single day. And I bet you, you're already going to start to see changes just from that, even though you're still halfway to yeah. where I need you to be I, just getting you to which by the way too is what reinforces this protein market because people people take it and they, they take it and then all of a sudden man I'm, yeah. I feel so good when I take right. it I build muscle it's like yeah. well it's because you were under eating protein totally next question is from Merritt Larissa is it a good idea to do a deloading week after each phase of a workout plan First, let's talk about what a deload week is. So essentially, a deload week is you go to the gym, you still work out, but everything's like 50%, right? So 50% weight, 50% reps, 50% intensity. It's like, it's like going to the gym and doing the easiest workout of all time or not working out at all and maybe just focusing on movement and mobility. Now, here's what's interesting about deload weeks. The data shows that when hard training athletes and people who are strength training, whatever, when they do this, they get more muscle gain during the deload week than they do than they do on the other yeah, weeks. Yeah, allowing their body to recover and it, receive all the benefits. I, I I was never, you know, I was always a like, well, I'll take some time off and go easy when I feel like it type of deal. Now I'm I've, I'm slowly becoming a proponent of scheduling deload weeks because yeah. the, I I see these with myself now quite a bit. So now what I do is every probably every four weeks or so, I do a week of really easy workouts. Not only do I not lose gains, but I kind of start to feel really good. And then when I come back, I'm always improved. And I schedule them because what I've noticed, and this is for me, right? Trainer, fitness podcast host, been doing this forever. I, by the time I think I need a deload week, I'm probably two weeks past when I actually needed one. Yeah. So, and if you look at all of the 
best workout plans that are out there, which are typically the ones that are for strength sports like powerlifting and Olympic lifting, they all periodize some form of a deload week. They all include some form of a deload week in there. So yeah, I think I mean the intense uh, type programming. I think this like applies the most. If you're going to try and do something like this, where you're really scheduling it in, yeah, and you're really getting after it. But uh, in terms of like going in between different phases of our workout plans, uh, not not necessary. I mm. mean, if you're doing everything uh, in terms of like the um, listening to your body, resting adequately in between your your foundational uh, workouts and your, your, you're doing the things that we, we prescribe in terms of like mobility days and, mm -hmm. you know, and you're, you're sort of like oscillating between those, you know, high intensity, low intensity days. Like it's unnecessary. It's, it's really for the, the people that are like, they're, they're doing a whole lot, uh, and they're usually consistent. too much. They're consistently doing it. They're, they're, they're high intensity. Uh, this, this makes a massive impact for those kind of people. There's, there's, uh, I'm really careful about how I answer this question has been out. I've had been asked this question a bunch of times and I'm really careful about how I respond to it because there's obvious value for certain people, uh, with this. There's only one person in this room who I think I, if I was training any of you who I would ever schedule a deload week. And it's the guy who's obsessed with training all the time and mm -hmm. never misses. Everybody else naturally has a deload week. <laughs> I know, the rest of us all, that. life happens and we Based actually have a week where we feel. miss training. It just yeah. organically happens yeah. in our lives. Sal's the only one that doesn't do that. So I would, if I was training each, every person in this room, he's the only one I would be like, okay, this guy's got a lot on his plate. He's got four kids. He never misses a workout. He's always pushing it hard. Okay, Sal, next month you and I are going to do this. And I would make him. Yeah. Everybody else in here is had enough times in the year where they have well, the life makes them have a deal. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and, and I think most clients are that way. So it really does depend on the person that I'm talking to on whether I would schedule something like this. Now to Justin's point, the way we phase maps programs, you would never have to do that. You should be able to follow program after program. And maybe you go to a, a program with less volume. Like maybe you could just came out of maps aesthetic. Yeah. And so following maps aesthetic up again may make you feel like you need to deal elite. But if you would have went over to maps performance mm -hmm. or uh, symmetry after that, like that would naturally reduce the intensity, yeah. reduce the volume. That would be great for the, without any breaks whatsoever. So it really, really depends on the, the client, if I would do this, and I'm careful about talking about it because I under, obviously I understand the science and the, and the value of deload weeks for your extreme athletes and people like Sal, but that's a very small this percentage of the population. Fanatics. You know, you know, which programs yeah. of all of the programs that we have, which programs I think people would benefit from doing a deload week only because the programs I'm about to mention, well, first off, one of our programs has deload weeks in them. That's maps anabolic advance. Yeah. That program has deload weeks scheduled in. But there's two programs that I think people would benefit from in inserting a couple deload weeks. And it's mainly because they're high volume workouts and because the typical consumer that we have that buys them probably is overstepping a bit. Like yeah. I know yeah. when mm -hmm. we get a caller and they're talking to us and we're like, oh, mm -hmm. you like to overtrain. Oh, and, and I was like, oh, let me guess what program you're on. Maps Aesthetic yeah, or Maps or Split. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> the whole PED for sure, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like Maps Split, Maps Aesthetic. Psychopath. The people that like to run those consistently, they'll benefit from from uh, from deload weeks. But yeah, you're right. I mean, you guys follow programs the way we lay them out. Yeah, then you'll be totally fine. It's all programmed in it's there. It's baked in there. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Look, if you're a coach or a trainer, we have a course. We have a course for you that teaches you how to build your business and become successful. You will you will not find a course like this anywhere. This is run by us, taught by us. We have put in there what we have seen makes trainers successful. Go to mindpumpfitnesscoaching.com. Get yourself signed up. Also, you can find us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam. 